has money tunayasema huyu mtu ni wa nguvu hello because they have what money and well but i very well know for the few years i have lived that money at times fails people have died in very expensive hospitals they have all the money money fails it's one of the strengths that we have people feel good even me as a man because i am married to a lady who needs to be supported when i have a thousand in my pocket i feel better hello when i have five thousand i even feel excited however money does fail the second thing that is we look at is power and you know the power in this in this world is usa you know that they are the international police they are the ones who check on others others are boys they are the men eh? but power fails at one time in september uh, in some september i can't remember which year the strongest country was hit so hard meaning that power does fail you may have power but power can take you on your knees the third one is a strong body and i remember when i was uh, a teenager i used to keep on pumping eh? until i realized that no cubes are coming and i stopped <laughs> Now let me tell you men and women of God seated here that the strength of the body can fail you. There are people who have been strong and have never done anything. Strength is only for a season. Strength is only for a time. A time comes when my strength will not be there, I will be finished. A time comes when you cannot use your strength to fight. Especially when someone comes above you who has more power, all you do is to fizzle out. So it may seem like strength in this world, but that indeed can can fail. The fourth one is what all of us desire, especially ladies. Beauty. And every woman seated here before they came to church, they check themselves. How they look. Because they are very particular about beauty. I didn't check myself. I think I'm, I am ruthless to my body. <laughs> but beauty fades away. Those old women you see here in Kikuyu using a walking stick were one time walking and someone would tell them S -s 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 -s. <laughs> and today no one notices when they pass. There's one time they could have done a catwalk. But beauty is only for a time. Beauty is only for a season. And beauty comes and fades away. And there are people who have been misguided and misworld and you don't hear them anymore. So beauty is there. It is power, of course, because when you are beautiful, ladies who are seated here, men will always be attracted, want to look at you, they want to sorora you. You know, they can do all that. However, it fades away. Number five, youthfulness. And many of us in this congregation are youthful. Because youthful is in the, youthfulness is in the heart. And let me tell you, men and women, there is a lot of strength in youth being, you, being young. Amen? But that is not forever and ever. You only young a season. It is good to be young, and I feel good because I'm not yet old. One has a few way. But that time is coming when this church will not need me. They will say, Nikitu Mohapa, because this is, my whole, this is my home area. And when someone becomes over 60 years, sometimes you are sent home, people say, Hatukutaki, because I'm too old to serve the church. So it's only for a season. And even many of us here who feel youthful and can jump up and down, let me tell you, even your grandmother was jumping. <laughs> so therefore, it is not forever. When you go to the wild animals, strength is seen in the lion. And let me say this, that lions are strong in hunting, but they can lack prey. Indeed, at times, lions have no strength to fight or even to hunt. When you come back to our homes, domestic animals, we have the horse. And the horse, even we talk about horsepower. You know horsepower? Like now we are doing, we want to take water from uh, down here in our borehole up. And the technical team tells me there must be a certain kind of a horsepower. Soon we are going to do... Um, to have a, a generator and that generator must be with a certain kind of horsepower because horse is a domestic animal that is very powerful ikikuvuta inakuvuta unavutika however there comes a time when that power is no longer there what about in among the birds the strongest of them is the eagle indeed an eagle can spot a prey many many kilometers away a time comes Bible says that it has no strength, it has to go and be renewed. And then finally, number nine, army and artillery. And this is what James, uh, uh, this man called uh, David is saying, that many trust in chariots 
others in their horses, the strength of battle. However, even when they have a strong battle, they can be brought to their knees. Hello? Yesterday you heard of people who were attacked in Kismayo, isn't it? And I'm sure there are weapons all over. But when the terrorists attack, no one can know because there's gorilla war. So it's not about the artillery. It's about the army. It is about the Lord. What am I saying this morning? When we are saying be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, it's because God is calling us to have strength from within. That is spiritual. Because strength from without will fade away and will fizzle out. I wish you can hear me and say amen. God would want us to be strong in, in him. As we go through this theme, the whole of this season, is a season that is tough. And I want to warn you, all of you seated here, it's a tough season. Because when we talk about spiritual warfare, it is not bread and butter. Already in the spiritual realm, I can feel the heaviness of the spirit. Personal, I'm your, I'm your priest and I know I can feel it. So it's a journey we are starting. Please be alert. Be strong in the Lord. Whenever there is battle, there are casualties. Let me not be a casualty. Battles are not easy. Whenever we go to war, we went to war in Somalia, many of our people have died there. So it's a journey we are starting as a church of three months. It will not be an easy journey to tell your neighbor that. So what is God saying today? Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I wish you can hear this from me. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Don't be strong with money and power and artillery and other things. Strength in the Lord. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Why, are, why is the Lord saying this to us this season? Number one, our war is against spiritual forces. It is not about human beings. When someone comes and steals your husband, it is not physical, it is spiritual. And until we stop fighting physically, we are going to be casualties. This is a battle. Christian faith is a battle against spiritual forces. And the enemy is on the other side wanting to fight back. We have a responsibility, and the Bible says very clearly, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces in the heavenly realm, in the air. And this battle has been fought anywhere, so it is our responsibility as members of this congregation to be strong in the Lord. <sighs> Number two. This battle takes many forms. On Sunday, you are taught about the battle is in there. What you are not told, that the mind is not this. The mind is the power of will. You didn't hear that. The mind is not the head. The mind is the power of... The mind is not the brain. The mind is the ability to decide. Because you people came here this morning because of your power of will. You would have gone to any other church. You would have slept. I became a minister in PCA out of will. I would have decided to go to another church. You became a Presbyterian by will. You married that person by will. You live where you live by will. The power of will is what is there? Mind. So temptations, so there are many battles who take many forms. Some of them is tem temptations that are sexual. Others is illnesses. Others is loss and death of loved ones. Others is hatred of others and God. Others is covetousness. Others is addictions. When you see addictions crawling into your family, don't take it physically. I know it's good to go to a, to a rehabilitation center, but that is a second option. The first option is to fight in the spirit. You didn't hear that. Charities of addiction, addictions of drugs, of pornography, of masturbation, pride, failure of plans that you have, and hopelessness. So we are fighting a battle that is taking different forms, and the enemy is good at camouflaging. Occasionally, I have differed with my wife, and we have almost fought, only to realize that it's the enemy camouflaging into her and into me that we may fight and lose this battle. It is for me to be alert. 
That's the message on Sunday. Hallelujah. About alertness. So we are calling you to a season that is not easy. So put on your safety belts. Amen. Amen. This weekend spiritual forces, weekend people, they make us fall to trample on us and sit on us. And the devil is excited when he sits on you. When he has won, he's very excited. Shame on him. Hello? Jesus won this battle on the cross. All we need is to make care or take care of our, our mind. So therefore, what is the Lord saying this season? Members of this congregation, be strong in the Lord in order to resist the devil. I want to give you an example of some seven sons of Sceva who went to a demon and told the demon, listen here you demon, in the name of God who Paul preaches, in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, go! And the demon told those young men, Jesus we know, Paul we know, who are you? And those boys were beaten. Hello? <laughs> They were beaten by demons. I'm not saying demons will beat anyone here because I'm praying for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I'm saying, personally, can you be strong in the Lord? Because we are not fighting against frail men. At times you may think you are fighting a human being. You may think so. It is called deception from hell. You may think you are, you are fighting people, but it, it is fallen angels. Indeed, the enemy fights in the world of ignorance, seen and in the air. That is why many, many of our, 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 our media houses will only broadcast things that do not edify anyone. Their work is just to usher us into things that are ungodly. And I want to call all of you to go to KTN on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, 8 o'clock to 9, and watch Moses and the Ten Commandments. Please do that. I do that, and I'll go home early because of that. Amen? And I pray for KTN. Hallelujah. <laughs> for nourishing us. That today I can see physically what God did in Egypt. So what am I saying here? It's a battle. It's a journey. Indeed, be strong in? He did not say it. Be strong in? So how do you know that the Lord is strong? Number one, he is a giver of life and in the, he is the one who takes it. Never be cheated by anyone that the devil has power to kill. It is only God who can say you go away and go away. Once you are in the Lord, Bible says very well, see now I myself, I am he, there is no God beside me. I put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded, I will heal. No one can deliver you out of my hand. Our God is mighty in battle. Hallelujah. He is so strong. He knows your end from the beginning. Hallelujah. Number two, he is the one who gives us the ability to create wealth. According to John 8, 18. Let me tell you this morning, I do not want members of this church who are rich. I want people who are wealthy. I wish you had that. Hallelujah. God never makes us rich. He makes us wealthy. People who are rich can do anything for money. They fight for money. People who are wealthy, their money work for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is what God is doing. And this country has very, very rich people who are not wealthy. It is God who gives you power to create wealth. Not to create riches. Riches are nothing. Riches is people who steal land, who kill others, just to acquire riches. And they are there in this country, we have seen them. And let them hear from me that those riches are coming to an end. You should have said amen. amen. And the, the, the riches of the wicked is indeed an inheritance for the righteous. Ay, 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 ay. You did not hear that. Because it is God who gives you power. So how I pray that many of us here want to become wealthy like me. Amen. Can say it is he who gives power to do what? To create wealth. Number three, it is he who overcame the devil by the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why were we taught on Sunday about the mind? Because the mind understands 
the concept of God and what God has already done. We are not overcoming the devil. Tell your neighbor that. Tell them he is already overcome. Hallelujah. Listen to this text, Hebrews 2, 15, 14 and 15. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who in all their lives were held in slavery of the fear of death. Once you know that, you should never ever fear death. Because the one who had the power of death was the devil. He was overcome on the cross. Oh, I wish I can hear an amen. amen. So death is simply a transition. Hallelujah. However, as we become strong, there are a few things that can make us weak, even in this journey. One of them is sinfulness. And let me tell you, Holiness is not living without sin. Holiness is sensitivity to sin and repenting. You did not hear that. Holiness is sensitivity to sin. That when I tell you you have done wrong, you can say, yes, God forgive me. When the Spirit convicts you of your sin, you say, yes, have mercy upon me, O God. That sensitivity is what makes us live a holy life. If you continue sinning, you become weaker and weaker and of course, a target of the enemy. Number two, we become weak when we are slaves of anything. When we are enslaved. How many of us here are slaves of many things? Who oh, God is against slavery. Number three, our state of mind, which is the power of will. How do you think how do you see things? How is your thought life? Whatever it is that you think, is it what is honorable? Praiseworthy. And then number five, our attitude. The way we see things. Because attitude is the lenses we use to see everything. Today if I look at uh, Penny here, and I have, a, I have a lens of hatred, I will hate her. If I have a, an attitude, which is a, an attitude of love, which is a lens, I will love her. Are we together? So my attitude is everything. So then the question I want to ask as we end, how then does God make us strong? You become strong through prayer and fasting. The other week, we had a whole week of prayer and fasting in this parish. And many of you participated. And thank you. We have no, it has not ended. It is only through prayer. And we read very well in the text that we read of uh, Psalms 20. May the Lord hear us from heaven. May he answer us in distress. Are you here? You are in distress? Don't fight. Pray. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. The song we always sing. How many of us here are going through pain that is needless? All you need is to whisper a prayer to God. God gives strength. Amen? Amen. Number two. It is through faith in him. I don't want to believe about this because it's one of our topics later. Do you have faith in God? How many of us here believe that their blessings will come from what they do? And I know that our Kikuyu, Meru, Embu, Kamba traditions, we have a lot of things that take us to a tradition because we believe in them. Once a child is sick, the first question you ask, have I paid all the dowry? <laughs> and you go to your father and you pay it. Your faith is not in God. Your faith is in dowry, is in traditions. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Can't God save me? That even today we have people paying dowry for people who are dead. Fake traditions. And they are killing our tradition in the guise of Kikuyuism, in the guise of Meruism. 
Why is our faith? Why have we declared the apostles' faith today? Why? Why? Why do we say this? Is it PR? Is it that we come here just to say because before the children are prayed for, I believe God the Father Almighty, oh my God, have mercy upon us. Is it PR? Do I believe in God? Do I believe him? Do I believe him? Do I believe in God? Number three. Strength comes from relationship with God. I have seen how this country people are divided. Some running towards Ruto, others towards Uhuru. Because that is where their strength is. But those are people who are there today and not there tomorrow. They will not be leaders forever. And you can see the relationship. You can see how our media houses are full of nonsense. Killing this, killing the other. Because of relationships, some fighting for the others. My question is, where is our relationship with God? Where is God in this country? Where is God? Don't we believe in him? Have we loved him to a way that he speaks to our lives? Oh, God Almighty. The Lord is asking, how I look at Paul. He is saying in 2 Timothy 1.12, I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Amen. You can never know unless it is relational. Oh my God. I only talk of knowing my wife because we have a relationship. How I pray that members of this parish will be strong as they relate with God. I wish you can see the groaning in my heart. I wish. Oh, I pray. How many coffees have you bought in, in Java for a relationship? <laughs> How many journeys have you gone in this country to seek a relationship? How many times have you ever gone to God and told God, I want to love you. I want to walk with you. And then finally, strength of God comes through his help coming to us. He is the one who sends help. The text we then say is, oh, send us help from heaven. And that's a, my prayer for this country. That is a prayer for this church. Oh, God in heaven, how you can send your help to us? Because it is only the help of God that can pull me from a bed of cancer and heal me. It is only the strength in God that can pull me from bondage. The help of God. Oh, I want to seek it with all my heart. So my prayer this day, my beloved in the Lord, be strong in the Lord and in mighty power. This strength is the inner strength. Tell your neighbor. I want to liken it to immunity. Immunity is a biological aspect in our bodies that helps us when we are attacked by a disease, we do not fall. Immunity does not say we will not be attacked. Listen to this very clearly. When I talk about inner strength, I am saying when I am attacked, when you are attacked by a disease, by an infection, the moment your immunity is strong, it's able to fight. And even if it is not strong to fight the disease, it will hold on until medicines come. Hello? We need this immunity, which is the strength of God. I know many of us are weak. Sometimes you are just attacked by someone and you feel like you are dead and finished. Wait to be buried. Strength, strength, strength that is in. How many of us here and are weak and feeling like they are going to die the next minute? The strength of God is here. Amen? Amen. Number two, the arm of flesh will fail us. The arm of flesh. Oh, the arm of flesh. I wish the, the song we sang can be repeated. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The arm of flesh will fail us. That's what we sang. And I pray that when we go to heaven, God is going to judge Presbyterians by the songs. <laughs> yes, because they are the ones we sing. And then finally, our help is in the name of the Lord. Can we go from strength to strength? I want to pray for you now. God has given me authority in this church.